One of the reasons I don't give my wife fancy new handbags is that she has this habit of always putting a small dog in it and testing it out. She ties a rope to the handle and she holds her hand at one place and swings the dog around in a vertical circle. Now it's very important to note that this is actually up when she's swinging the dog around in the handbag. And the fixed central point is where she's holding her hand. And so let's say that the dog is going around like this. So that would be the tangential speed of the dog. So if I want to know, for instance, when this cable is going to break, do you think just first off, do you think the cable might break at the bottom or at the top? Or do you think it's probably symmetric? Doesn't matter who knows, you know, whenever she's going the fastest. But let's say she's going at some constant speed somehow. Uh, with the dog going around in the handbag in a circle, but there's actually gravity. So I want to kind of figure out what the tension force is right there. That tension force is causing the dog to move in a circle because the dog would prefer to go in a straight line in the direction of its velocity. And then I guess it might afterwards go into some kind of para parabolic motion. So there's nothing, remember, there's nothing that's pushing the dog out of a circle. It just wants to go in a straight line. So when it's here, it would prefer to go straight. And if the, um, if the, rope that's holding a handbag were to break, then it would just go in a straight line and then then parabolically dive off here and I would catch it, of course. So what we need to do is we need to make a free body diagram of the bag when it's like that. And so to do that, I'll draw a bag really quickly. Oh, it looks like a one-eyed happy thing. And then I'll draw some forces. First of all, I notice that MG is pointing down. And then I want to think about some other forces. So before you do anything automatic, like don't tell me there's a normal force on this bag because there's no surface acting on it. But there is tension, and tension's pulling which way when the rope is like this? Which way does tension pull the bag? It looks like tension's pulling the bag down. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Now we can make a free body diagram for the bag because there aren't any other forces acting on it. It's not a very windy day. And of course, we're in that gym in West County, St. Louis, where there's a vacuum. So I'm going to write down Newton's second law in the y direction because Newton's second law is all we have to determine that tension force. Here's what I know. I'm going to assume that I know the mass of the handbag, and I'm going to assume that I know the tangential speed of the handbag, and I'm going to assume that I know the radius of this circle. After that, we can do everything in here. So here's what I do. The acceleration in the y direction. Now that's interesting. I guess that's going to be an inward acceleration. I'm going to choose actually to put the y direction that way in this case. Is that okay with you? I hope it's okay. Because that way I'll have a centripetal acceleration. It's going to be mass times centripetal acceleration. And the, uh, the net force in the y direction, well, that's going to be tension plus mg. And I need you to look at this sucker and think about how tension would be. And we'll revisit in just a moment. The next step is to consider the tension when it's down here. So I'll put a little dotted line and we can separate ourselves. If the bag is like this, and the rope is pulling upward, I'm going to define that direction to be y. Interesting. And then I need to draw some forces on the handbag. Oh, look what I've done. Dang it, I don't want to do that because I didn't draw just the bag. Here I'm going to draw just the bag. And now I put a dot in the middle, and now I'm going to draw forces on that bag. First of all, there is mg, and that's as it was, right? The mg has to be the same. Next, I'm going to draw the, ooh, what should I do? I guess I'm going to draw the tension force. Which way is the tension pulling the bag at this moment? I guess it's pulling it up. And I don't know how long to make this, so I'm just going to write tension right there and sort of come back to that in just a moment. I'm going to draw, though, Newton's second law. And Newton's second law here says the net force in the y direction is mass times acceleration in the y direction. And the mass is assumed to be known, and we're saying that that direction, the y direction, is centripetal. So I just write A sub C right here. It's a good time as any to write down the equation for centripetal acceleration. That's just Vt square over r. So I'm going to assume that we can just plug that in. That'll just be some number, the same here as it is here, because the radius doesn't change and the speed doesn't change. We have uniform circular motion. Happy to work with. Now, the net force in the y direction, that says we need to add up the forces in the y direction. Now, I've got one in the positive y direction, that's tension. And then I've got one in the negative y direction, that's mg. And I'm going to put a circle around that equation. And I'm going to ask you to look at this. Tension in this case is 
m times ac plus mg, but in this case, tension is mac minus mg. This is very interesting. If mac is a constant, it's just gonna be the mass times the centripetal acceleration, then I'm either adding to, whoa, tension is weird. Here, tension's really big. It's gotta be all that and then a bag of chips. But over here, tension is really small. I want you to notice this though. This mg, like that distance right there, is partially canceled out by the tension that's upward. And so this chunk of the tension is a leftover force. You could call that a net force. And this here is a net force. And I suppose I should be a lot more careful with my tension force. It should be much longer because I need the net force to be the same in both instances. The net force here, this pink circle force, whee! is the net force on the handbag here, and this pink circle force is those two forces together. That's the net force on the handbag there, and it has to be the same, because here's the thing. The tension, when it's at the bottom, has to first overcome gravity, and then has to provide a net centripetal force. So this is an example of why centripetal force, Fc, does not go on a free body diagram. Don't put FC on free body diagrams because FC is a resultant. It's what you get if you add this force and that force together. You get this pink stuff up here. And it's what you get if you add that force and that force together in the same direction. That's a lot clearer. But that's the net force in that circumstance, tension plus mg. Over here, it's going to be, well, the net force is going to be tension minus mg. That's it. Think about that. Do a problem.